Hi, welcome to the next session about life under the sea. Before we begin, we're just going to do a quick refresh of some of the things we learned last time. In the last presentation, we learned that coral reefs are really important to the health of our ocean and they support life on the reef. So a coral is a collection of animals that live together. Can you remember what the animal is called? That's right, it's called a polyp. A coral is a collection of polyps that live together. Can you remember the main groups for coral? The first one begins with H and the second one begins with S. Can you remember it now? There are hard corals and soft corals. Hard corals have a skeleton and they form the main reef structure and soft corals don't. There are more than 2000 types of coral and they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Last time we looked at some different kinds of corals and what animals might live in them. We also learned that coral has a plant friend that feeds them 90% of their food and produces lots of oxygen for the ocean. Can you remember what this plant friend is called? That's correct, algae. Let's be scientists and use the technical word, zooantheli. Can you say it with me? Zooantheli. Zooantheli. Good job. They give the coral its nice colour and use photosynthesis to turn carbon dioxide and the sun's energy into food for the coral and oxygen for our ocean and the planet. Did you know that coral reefs absorb 25% of the Earth's carbon, which is the same amount as all of the plants and trees on Earth? That's how important coral reefs are to our planet. So let's get started. Today's session we're going to be talking about coralivores and herbivores. Coralivores and herbivores eat the coral and algae that we've just been learning about. You can see them there in the ocean ecosystem, circled in yellow. Coralivores eat coral. The clue is in the name. Can you remember the name of this fish? We mentioned it last week. The clue is in the picture. That's right, it's a butterfly fish. Do you think you can figure out why it was given this name? There are over 120 species of butterfly fish around the world. They get their name from their amazing patterns, just like butterflies. They usually like to live in shallows between the surface and about 30 metres deep, which is almost the same height as two double-decker buses on top of one another. They often stay by themselves when they're younger. Butterfly fish have small pointy mouths which are designed to help them eat little coral polyps. They are also known to eat small crustaceans like tiny crabs or shrimp. As they get older, butterfly fish might pair with a mate that they will stay with for life, like husband and wife or like BFFs. If you see them swimming in a pair, that will be their life partner. The butterfly fish is already named after a butterfly, but some of the different species are also named after animals. This one, for example, has a big black spot over its eyes. What animal can you think of with big black spots over eyes? Hmm, some of you are still not sure. Okay, I'll give you another clue. This animal is native to Asia and it loves to eat bamboo. Any guesses now? This is a panda butterfly fish. Can you see the similarities? Both of them have big black splodges over their eyes. Now this one looks like it's wearing a bandit or a robber's mask. What animal can you think of that looks like it's wearing a mask? Still not sure? Here's another clue. Think about Rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy. This one is a raccoon butterfly fish. Can you see the similarities on this one? It has black marks over its eyes and white eyebrows. Think of your favourite animal. Can you draw a butterfly fish that looks like this animal? Perhaps your favourite animal is a Dalmatian and your butterfly fish is white with black spots. Or do you love tigers and your butterfly fish has stripes? There is a butterfly fish outline as part of this week's activity pack, so feel free to print it out and colour in that butterfly fish. Eclipse butterfly fish look like they have a solar eclipse on the back of their body by their tail. If you look at this picture, you can see the black spot with the neon ring around it. And looking at the picture of the solar eclipse, you can see a black spot with a light ring around it. Lots of butterfly fish also have black spots in a similar place. This is a distraction for predators as they might think the spot looks like an eye. 
When the butterfly fish has its nose in the coral eating, the predator will think that the fish is looking right at them and it won't attack. For humans, this will be the same as having eyes in the back of your head. Some butterfly fish are just named as they look, like this three-banded butterfly fish, which has three bands of brown on it, or this double saddle butterfly fish, which has two black saddles on its back. Herbivores eat vegetables. You might have heard the term herbivores when talking about other animals or even dinosaurs. Can you say the word herbivore? Think herb like mint or basil, bee like a bumblebee, and vor like four, herbivore. Herbivores or herbivorous fish eat the algae that you find on the coral. So you know this game. Can you sound up this fish? That's right, it's a parrotfish. There are about 80 species of parrotfish in the world and they range in size from about 30 centimetres, which is the length of a school ruler, to four foot, which is the height of the average seven-year-old. We'll talk about these big parrotfish later on. Parrotfish are designed to chomp at the coral to get the algae that they eat. They have beaks or dental plates instead of mouths with teeth, which are perfect for scraping at the hard coral reef structure. Although parrotfish only digest the algae that lives on coral, they still have to eat the coral. You might think looking at this picture that the parrotfish are bad for coral, but in actual fact, they are quite good for the health of our coral reefs. They eat unhealthy coral and leave space for new healthy coral polyps to grow. They also help to remove microalgae on top of the coral that might be preventing the coral polyps from feeding. They only digest the algae and poop out the coral skeleton as sand. Scientists think that a grown-up parrotfish can poop as much as 2,200 kilos of sand each year, which is as much as a white rhino. Whoa! Do you know what a group of fish is called? It's where you go for lessons most of the year. That's it. A group of fish is called a school. Female parrotfish usually school together with one lead male. If there isn't a male, one female will change gender from female to male and will become the lead male. The process can take two to three weeks and they'll grow in size and even change their colour. This means that parrotfish are always able to breed to keep healthy population numbers. Unlike most fish which use their tails to swim, parrotfish use their pectoral fins to swim. Pectoral fins are the fins on their side. Their beaks along with their pectoral fins flapping to help them swim make them look like birds which is where the name parrotfish came from. Finally, the biggest parrotfish species is called the bumphead parrotfish, which can grow over a metre in length. They have a large bump on the front of their head, which is flat. It looks as though they've been bumping into walls. They're often seen in schools on the edge of coral reefs. Can you think what are two key features of a parrotfish? Just think about a parrot and you won't be far off. The final one for this lesson, and it's a little bit more difficult. The picture on the left it's a doctor, but it performs operations. Next, we're going to be talking about surgeon fish. There are about 50 species of surgeon fish in the world, which also include a fish called unicorn fish. You might recognise this fish as Dory from Finding Nemo or Finding Dory. She's a regal blue tang or a pallet surgeon fish. Now, surgeon fish have a spine as sharp as a surgeon's scalpel or knife at the base of their tail. You can just about make it out on this picture, the small black line on the yellow part of their tail. Can you point it out on the screen? This is where they get their name from. They can use this as a weapon to protect themselves from predators, but it only sticks out when the tail is bent. They can't extend it whenever they want. Unicorn fish are also part of the surgeon fish family. They have a small bump or horn that comes out from their forehead that appears when they are male or when females reach adulthood. They also have spines by their tails, but theirs are shaped like hooks and they have two instead of one. Surgeon fish also eat algae like parrotfish, but not the type of algae that you find in the polyps. This algae sits on top of the reef, like micro or macro algae. You might have seen algae like this before. Think about a piece of wood that perhaps has been in the rain for a long time and sometimes it can get a bit slimy. That will be algae growing on it. Surgeon fish mouths are much better designed to nibble at the algae on top of the coral. They don't need to chomp at the whole coral like a parrotfish does. 
By eating the algae, they stop it from spreading too much over the reef, which would be bad for the coral, as they wouldn't be able to feed. They might also clean algae off turtles to help them stay clean and healthy. Right, that was a lot of information. We reminded ourselves at the beginning of this session why coral reefs are important. That's the green section at the bottom of the ecosystem slide here. We then talked about coralivores, butterfly fish, and hopefully you drew your own butterfly fish, taking inspiration from your favourite animal. Finally, we talked about herbivores, parrotfish and surgeonfish. Both of these fish species are really important to protect the reef and help it stay healthy. Those are the two blue sections highlighted here. In the next session, we're going to cover the next two groups in orange that are in the ocean ecosystem. Smaller carnivores like grouper. Can you think what a grouper might eat? Hold that in your mind and we'll find out in the next session. Bigger carnivores like tuna will hunt bigger fish on the reef and even small grouper. There are lots of things you can do to protect the ocean and they are good for the planet as a whole. Big things like trying to reduce the amount of plastic you use, like bottles or straws. Remembering to turn the TV or lights off when you leave the room. That reduces the amount of electricity you use and that can help the ocean too. Try to look for sun cream that is reef safe. The less ingredients, the better. Try to reduce your carbon footprint. Perhaps you can take public transport, cycle or walk to get to school. Finally, take only pictures and leave only bubbles. Shells and coral belong in the ocean. And if you're underwater, diving or snorkelling, remember not to touch the coral and to just enjoy the view. Thank you very much for watching. As with last time, there is a downloadable activity pack for those of you with a printer, featuring a small quiz and some activities and colouring in. If you don't have a printer, there is an online quiz available too. Don't forget to share pictures of your drawings. I'd love to see them. And let me know if you have any questions about the fish we spoke about in this session or about corals, the ones that we spoke about in last week's session. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe so you can get notified when the next lesson is available. And see you next time.